On this week's program, we show you a unique vintage trailer that's not really vintage, but brand new. And meet the person that makes Tom Tom trailers. Also, Jeff Johnston shows us the advantages of the WineGuard carryout antenna. And how about a healthy chocolate pudding? Yvonne shows us how to make her delicious avo chocolate treat. These stories and more on this week's Rolling On TV. Rolling On TV is brought to you by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed and Spanish captioning, where available, is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. Nostalgia plays a big part in the ongoing appeal of the vintage trailer arena. Vintage trailers are hot these days, and there's a lot of good reasons for that. I know for me, one of the things that really brings it home to me when I step into one of these old trailers is this little guy up here. It's an authentic propane mantle lamp. And my parents' trailer, when I was a kid, had one of those lamps. This is from the mid-60s or so when we would go traveling. And when I step into a trailer that has that lamp burning, there's something about the smell of the propane that just immediately transports me back to Bonneville Hot Springs, um, the Oregon coast, going back to Chicago, any of the places that we visited as kids in that trailer. So this one, naturally, since this trailer has one of those, I can smell that and <sighs> kind of one of those little, little nostalgia hits that I really enjoy. Now this particular trailer obviously is a beautiful vintage style trailer. And I say vintage style because, believe it or not, this is not a rebuilt trailer. This is a brand new trailer, new from the ground up, built by a fellow named Tom Underwood. Tom has an interesting approach for building his vintage trailers, so we'll meet him out here in a minute and uh, take a look at what he does. It's pretty darn impressive. The Tom Thumb vintage trailer is unlike any new RV you've ever seen. Uh, Tom Thumb Trailers is an idea I had to uh, recreate the old style trailers, only for someone to be able to have a, the old trailer but have a brand new trailer at the same time. Uh, I got the idea um, many years ago. I, I, I probably built a hundred trailers in my mind, uh, going over uh, procedures and, and materials and so forth and doing research and uh, moved up to Oregon, got a shop here and my wife's been very supportive and I uh, started building Tom Thumb trailers. They're a, they're a reproduction of a 1950 rod and reel trailer. Uh, and I tried to keep as true, true to form as, as possible. So we, yeah, we started camping um, when I was very young. Some of my, my earliest memories are camping. And my grandfather had a DeVille camper and my parents would rent uh, the canned ham style trailer. And uh, I'd sleep in the old fashioned cot up above uh, the, the main bed and uh, Sometimes, uh, depending on how many people came along with this, some people would be out in tents, but uh, the, the trailer was the, the love. My first love was classic cars. Love, love classic cars. I, I love to see them uh, restored. Um, uh, and a little bit of the customs too, but my, my father, I got that love from my father and my brother. Uh, they're both car enthusiasts. Uh, I still have my very first car. I ever had was a 1963 Nova uh, Chevrolet. Uh, my brother still has his first car. He ever had a, a, a 1941 Chevrolet business coupe. So in the family, we, uh, we, we were always been involved with cars, like to go to the swap meets and uh, talk car, car talk with people. And then we, you know, restore them at home. Uh, and it kind of, it kind of uh, went hand in hand with the trailers in that, uh, there are so many things um, are alike in the car as, as a car enthusiast than as a trailer enthusiast. And so I was able to take some of those things I learned from the cars and then things I've learned, um, abilities uh, 
from my father, and he was able to, uh, uh, I was able to use those in, in building the trailers. I'm the only one working on the trailers. Uh, it's, uh, any mistakes you find, they're mine. I <laughs> can't, can't blame anyone else as of right now. Uh, we're, we, I put, I'm planning on putting out about two trailers every six months. So people who are interested in custom type things, it is possible on the trailers, but yeah, have to get your timing right or else have to be prepared to wait until the next build on the trailers. The trailers that I'm building, they, they really do look like the, the original trailer. When you walk into the trailer, it's like, the, it's like a going back in time. I was at a, a trailer rally with other trailer enthusiasts and I, I had one gentleman who examined the trailer very carefully, looked it up and down, and asked me what the trailer was. And I told him, well, it was a reproduction trailer based on a 1950 rod and reel. And he just went away shaking his head like, no, that can't be. I just, I'm just not gonna believe it. And, uh, uh, but it is, and uh, I, it's, it's that true to form. And it's uh, 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 very, very genuine looking. Because I used original materials, uh, very, very similar to the originals. I used real linoleum. It's not vinyl flooring, but it is linoleum. So it's uh, made from linseed oil. No, no off-gassing. Uh, uh, it's, um, it's naturally antibacterial. It's, um, and it, it flexes with, with the movement of the trailer, so there's no cracking in it. It's a, it's a really good product. Um, other things, uh, it's all birch paneling inside, uh, made, uh, finished with shellac, just like the originals were. Uh, I, I went everything, even, even the, the heads of my screws, I try to use slotted screws wherever possible because you just didn't see the, the, uh, the old, the new um, Phillips head screws in, in, the, uh, in the older trailers, I just didn't use them then. We'll be back to learn more about the Tom Thumb trailers right after these commercial messages, so stay tuned. Thetford's tough new Titan sewer hose is virtually uncrushable. Ever had your sewer hose run over by an RV? Watch Titan bounce back. Titan hose is made of Thetford's proprietary blend of TPE and provides the highest degree of puncture and abrasion resistance. It has an easy to grip fitting for a leak free connection to RV outlets. A rotating elbow easily aligns and allows a convenient connection and straighter flow. Titan provides more for your money and is another innovation from Thetford, the RV sanitation leader. If your RV is still using a water heater with 100-year-old technology, isn't it time you switched? Truma AquaGo. Instant, continuous, and endless hot water. For more information, visit truma.net. Welcome back to Rolling On TV. Let's continue our look at Tom Thumb Trailers, a vintage style RV built all new from the ground up. It takes dedication to your craft and attention to hardware details to build a vintage RV this accurate. I make the frame myself. Uh, it's all uh, um, undercoated and then with a frame paint on it. So it's a little bit of a rust preventative underneath there. Um, and then I, then I built it up with a um, plywood floor. I used a heavier than the original floor uh, so that you have no sags or, or anything in that flooring. Um, it's, it's all stick built, just like a house on the frame. It's a uh, two by two framing, all screwed uh, and not nailed. So it's all screwed together. Uh, in the original trailer, how they, make, how they made the curves in it. Everybody asked me, how'd you make the curves? Well, they used, uh, they cut strips of plywood and they, they laminated them or just lapped them over and made their curve. Well, I didn't use that. I used, I used um, solid wood instead of the plywood. Um, in the original, if they, ever, if they ever got a leak in there, once that water got into that plywood, it just expands like a sponge yeah. and the whole trailer's ruined. This, this can never happen. These are, I put, lam I laminated it with, um, with solid wood in strips and made my, with, with, uh, with clamps and uh, glue and screws and it's, 
it's very solid, very solid part of part of the framework. It's all in the original, original six inch crease seams on it, uh, just like the original trailer. And over here is one of our our original windows that we've uh, restored, and we use this as a pattern for our new trailer. So they're identical in every form. This the uh, the, the only difference is the material used for the, the rubber is now a silicon instead of the old vinyl. So you won't have the shrinking like you have and you see in the other trailers where there'll be a big gap in your silicon or your, or your vinyl. So here we are at the reproduction trailer and this is one of the reproduction windows. They're made to be identical to the original windows in function and, and looks. You could take a piece off of this window and, and interchange it with an original window and it would work just fine. They're that, they're that close in the specifications and, and work exactly the same as that, as the old awning style window. When you go into the trailer, you'll, you'll see that uh, right down to the welting around where the, where the wood meets, uh, it, will, uh, uh, it, it's like, it looks like the original. Um, the, the hardware I used, I couldn't find identical hardware, but I found period looking hardware, nickel plated it all is. Uh, that, that looks and has the feel of the, of the vintage trailer. A lot of times they were, they were, let's face it, they were manufacturing, they were putting out as many as they could as cheaply as possible. They didn't intend, intend for these to last 50 years. You know, they, they, just, they just weren't built that way. Um, I'm building these so that they will last. They really will if you take care of them. These trailers should last you a, a lifetime uh, with, with, the, with the original uh, uh, type of materials inside. The, the dinette is I used a reconstituted leather seating. Uh, the original was a vinyl, but this is, this is a leather. Uh, the the uh, draperies are all 100% uh, uh, cotton with a vintage print on them, so they have the feel of it. The light fixtures are uh, almost identical. They're still making a light fixture just, just very close to the original light fixture that was in there in 1950. Um, it, uh, it uses a full-size light bulb in there, just like in your home only. They're 12 volt light bulbs. So they're about a 50 watt bulb. And we've got three different light fixtures in there. So there's lots of light. And going along with the light, it also has a original type propane light in there too for the the old uh, over the table, and it, that puts out about a, a, a 50 watt, 60 watt uh, type light too. So you get that get that feel with it, uh, like that you had in the original trailers with the propane lighting. Well, I I didn't I didn't put an oven in it, but it does have a stove. Uh, it has a three burner stove in it, all propane. Uh, it's got a nice nice cover on it, so when you're not using it, extend your countertop. You have more countertop space. Uh, or else you open it up and it has a stainless steel with the sides, um, to the heat shield. Uh, the original ice box was a, a piece of tin. It was a box, tin with a shelf in it. And that's all it was. My ice box, I made it the same design, only I made it out of a heavier duty steel and the coated steel in the inside so, there's, so it won't rust. Uh, it also has an inch and a half of insulation all around it, side, top, bottom. and. Uh, uh, made the front a birch piece, a piece of birch wood on the front, so it matches the cabinet, so it doesn't uh, stand out and it fits right in. Uh, it's uh, it's it's quite efficient. It'd be, it'd be very surprised how long you can put either real ice in it, or you can put your um, your freezer pack ices in there too. This trailer is not a trailer for everybody. It's not it's not a trailer for a family of five. It's not going to fit in it. It's you know it's 12 feet long. Uh, it's, it's very true to the original scale of the trailers. Um, it has a surprisingly a, a, a large amount of storage for a small trailer, it, it really does. Uh, but it is, it is really for those people who, who want that retro feel, but don't have the, maybe the time or the skills to redo an old trailer, because they're pretty hard to find when they're just ready to go. Uh, so this, is, this allows the people to have that old trailer feel. They can participate. Most, most rallies, they're welcome with these, with these trailers. And uh, uh, those trailer rallies are a fun time. They are really, really a blast. You get to meet a lot of nice people and go to a lot of nice places. And uh, uh, it's, it's just a real good, wholesome 
family time. Uh, if anybody's in the uh, Salem, Oregon area, um, i love to show you around, love to show you firsthand uh, trailers. Uh, you, you just give me a call. Uh, I've got a website. You can go to TomThumbTrailers.com and you can contact me that or you can call me on the phone and uh, we can, you can come on over and take a look and I'll show you around, give you the nickel tour. Well, that's a pretty interesting look at these Tom Thumb trailers. Definitely built unlike anything else on the market. And if you'd like to learn more about it, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. And thank you for watching. Coming up after the break, getting great TV reception virtually anywhere. We didn't make the majestic mountains or the rugged terrain or paint the night sky but we make it possible to see it all. Road Trek, America's number one selling touring coach for over 25 years. Built with quality so you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the destinations you want. Enjoy the peace of mind that only a Road Trek can provide. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Satellite TV is a great innovation for RVs, but reception can be poor among tall trees or other campground obstructions. Enter the WineGuard Carryout Series of Portable Satellite TV Antennas. You can position the carryout within the reach of its 50-foot connecting cable to receive a better signal than you might in your parking spot. A clear view to the southern sky works best. A tripod base attaches easily to the antenna and adjustable legs allow for roughly leveling the unit. The original carryout can access channels from DISH, DirecTV, and Bell TV. See the company website for more details. The ground anchor screws into the dirt and uses a bungee cord to help secure the antenna in high winds, for example. A proprietary cable connects the dish to a 12-volt power supply. If none is readily available, you can use a small converter for power. A coax cable with standard screw-on fittings routes the signal to the RV's TV signal input connector and satellite receiver. It's portable for you, so it's also portable for the bad guys. You can add a lockable safety cable attached to a fixed object for extra security. The WineGuard Carryout is a great solution to improving your satellite TV reception when RVing. For more information about the WineGuard Carryout antenna system, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. We didn't make the majestic mountains, or the rugged terrain, or paint the night sky, but we make it possible to see it all. Road Trek, America's number one selling touring coach for over 25 years. Built with quality so you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the destinations you want. Enjoy the peace of mind that only a Road Trek can provide. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Do you have a sweet tooth that just won't quit, but a waistline that needs to whittle? Today I'm going to show you how to make a rich, creamy, satisfying dessert that will wow you while still being healthy. 
chocolate pudding. <laughs> what? Yeah, there's a trick to this, as you might expect. The base of our pudding is, wait for it, avocados. Ripe and ready, these nutritional powerhouses contain numerous vitamins and minerals, including potassium, folate, vitamins B, C, and E. They're also known to lower bad cholesterol and more. We'll sweeten it with a little bit of honey and add a few more healthy ingredients. In just a jiffy, you'll be enjoying a no-cook, decadent dessert that will leave a smile on your face, and only you and I need to know it's not only good, it's good for you. It's super simple, so let's get started. What you're gonna need is a blender. Now you can use a Vitamix, you can use a food processor, a stick blender, a hand beater, or with a little bit of elbow grease, you can use a fork to smash the avocado and a whip to mix everything up. Okay, so to our blending container, I'm gonna add two avocados. You wanna make sure that your avocados are not overripe. So when you pick them out at the store, just give them a little squeeze, just a little gentle pressure, and they should give just a little bit. That's how you'll know they're ripe and ready to go. Just like that. I'm gonna add a half a cup of cocoa powder right to the mix like so. I've got a quarter cup of skim milk. Perfect, like that. We're gonna add about one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Mm, delicious. By the way, if you'd prefer to use something like a mint extract, a rum extract, or even bourbon, that works just fine too. But keep it about one teaspoon. And I'm gonna add a little bit of honey. We're gonna add six tablespoons, which is a scant or an almost third cup. And a lot of my viewers will know this trick. In order to get the honey to slip out of the measuring cup easily, we're gonna use just a little bit of nonstick spray right on the cup, and then we're gonna put the honey in it. Okay, and are you ready for this? You're gonna love it. Right in like that. As you can see, it pretty much slips out. Simple and easy, so you get every drop. The last thing we're gonna add is one teaspoon of espresso powder. This is just gonna give it a little depth of flavor, and if you don't have espresso powder, you can use just a little bit of instant coffee. That works just as well. Once blended, you're gonna put this into four individual serving size bowls or dishes, because you're gonna get four servings out of this, just like so, nice and beautiful. We're gonna garnish this with some fresh mint. Now you can use toasted coconut, you can use an orange zest, whatever you like. I love the fresh mint. I'm also gonna eat these mint leaves as I eat my chocolate pudding. So right in like that. And then we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of Florida de Sel. This is just some flaky sea salt. I happen to pick this up in Paris. It gives it a nice crunch and goes oh so well with the sweet chocolate flavor. On top like this. Perfect. We're gonna put this in the refrigerator. It's gonna chill for about 30 minutes and then we'll be ready to eat it. All right, it has been 30 minutes. Our chocolate pudding has chilled and it's ready to eat. As you can see, by the way, it is just beautiful. Looks just like chocolate pudding. Believe it or not, it tastes just like it. So I'm gonna have a bite. Let's see what we think. Get a little bit of that Fleur de Sel in it. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, the salt gives it just a little bit of crunch. It's creamy, mm, chocolatey, and delicious. Try this at home. It's simple to make in your RV kitchen. Let me know how it goes. I'm Yvan. We'll see you next time. Cheers. We hope you enjoyed this week's program. And for additional information on anything you saw on the show, along with additional video, stories, and more, visit our website at rollingontv.com. You can also visit us on Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest. As usual, 
this has been another fun production. For the latest up to the minute RV news, visit our media partners at RVBusiness.com. Thank you.